The reason why shooting Ilford Panaf outdoors is perfect on the Yashica Mount 120G is because it suits subjects ranging from architecture, still life to portraiture as well as fashion. It offers slow speed, high contrast, black and white film photography with exceptionally fine grain sharpness and detail. How often have you tried pointing your TIR up to shoot? It's not very practical to do so unless you've got a tripod and a very steady hand. For the casual person in public, they're probably curious why someone's pointing a black box upwards as if they were looking through a periscope of a submarine. I think this picture came out pretty well. The dark sharp lines in between the bright glass contrast well and gives an illusion of the building disappearing into the sky. In contrast, no pun intended, this picture is taken of the shard a little further away. It's a much more common shot. You may have seen the same building. Have you been to the top of the building? It must have a pretty epic view from up there, I think. Ilford Panav comes in 35mm and medium format. It is rated at ISO 50 and is known for its high contrast, super sharp black and white film with very fine grain. Ideally, you need to shoot this film in a studio or on a naturally very bright and sunny day. Naturally, I did the opposite of what was recommended on the film box. It was another dull, cold, wintry day in central London and I had to use a roll which was needed to be used up anyway. In hindsight, this was a mini win, namely because the high contrast of the film was the best way to communicate the physical environment and the feel at the time. Dayaro Moriyama says that make sure that you really look at things, the objects, whether they're food or other goods, in all their variety. You're probably thinking, obviously. Sometimes, however, it's the simplest of advice that can get you going again. Moriyama also suggests for anyone heading out to the street to put aside concepts or themes. Ultimately, get out there and shoot, shoot, shoot. It might be that once you have gone out somewhere and got a feel of the place, you'll be able to look back at your photos and reassess. It might be that an image stands out for you and you may want to go back and explore that a little bit further with your camera. This is one of my favorite images from this walk. I love the dark intense contrast on the edges of the frame with the light illuminating through. It almost feels like going back a hundred years and reimagining what street life must have been like with the market vendors out on the street and people involved in the hustle bustle of daily life. This tiny Rotherhide watch house was established as a base for constables of St Mary's Parish in 1821. You can see that the rectangular stone plaque above the door confirms both the function and the date of the building. Every time I walk in London I find something new. This watch house, as well as being a base for monitoring the streets at night, was in a very useful position on the edge of his churchyard or guarding against body snatchers. Body snatching was very lucrative and commonplace back in the 1800s in London. It was of course totally illegal because fresh bodies were always in demand by anatomists at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital for dissection and teaching purposes. Until 1832, the only other corpses legally available to the hospitals were those condemned to death and dissection in the courts or unclaimed bodies of people who had died in hospitals or poor houses. Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital is literally around the corner and is still very much in operation today. However, the watch house closed down back in 1836 after the Metropolitan Police was formed in 1829. The fine tonal grain gives the images taken on Ilford Panav that classic feeling and look. It would be cool to shoot some actors in peak blinders sort of situations somewhere along here too. I know that Ilford Panav is rated 50 ISO, however, I was really impressed by how well it handled extremely low light conditions. Take this picture taken inside with little to no natural light coming through. I guess one of the advantages of having a TLR or any medium format camera, the leaf shutter, is that you can really bring that shutter speed down. As such, with a steady hand or even the camera resting on the surface, you'll be able to capture something delicate in the most light challenging conditions. Have you shot with the Yushika 124G or similar 6x6 cameras? Which one was your favourite picture from this video? What would you recommend? shooting with or how to use this film for projects. Let me know in the comments below. I really, really appreciate it. Check out my last video right here. I'll see you on there.